Coming up on this episode of The Village Idiom. The vaccine that prevents smallpox prevents monkeypox. And so you are two pox secured. <laughs> <laughs> dum, dum, da, da, village Idiom. Hello and welcome to The Village Idiom. We are a podcast that every week we choose a popular saying. We take an admittedly shallow, hopefully comedic, once in a while even interesting, and if we're lucky, educational dive into its meaning, its usage, its origins. But we're also going to use it to hang our otherwise directionless conversation on. My name is Jurassic Mark. And I am Skinny. It's, oh man, just such a lazy week. Lazy? How lazy? (laughs) That's pretty. How lazy was it? It It's pretty lazy. I sat around and did nothing. That's the segue right into this. The human being is called a couch potato. (laughs) Couch potato. (laughs) That's today. Couch potato. I'm looking forward to some couch potatoing coming up. Yeah? Because like after recording, you and me? Well, (laughs) that that sounds like a little more... A little little too friendly? (laughs) A little little more two two spuds in a blanket or whatever those are. (laughs) That's a saying, isn't it? Two spuds in a blanket? Yeah, something like that. I can't remember exactly. <laughs> Two scuds? <laughs> Studs. Oh, so. Uh, well, it, in this in this vein of things, I already I already have like some entertainment for you to get the ball rolling. To get the spud rolling. Okay. <clears throat> Can you name off maybe three or four types of potatoes? Oh, man. Uh, so, the russet? The russet. Fantastic. Uh, sweet? Sweet. Uh, does yam count? I think it's a sweet potato, but yam, yeah, um, arguably different. A, um, a, 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 a yellow? Yes, a Yukon gold. Yep. Um, oh, man, you're killing it. Is there more than that? Let's see. Uh, baked? Okay. <laughs> Mashed? <laughs> okay. Roasted? Uh, the and the red, classic red po- French fries. Red potato. Two potato. <laughs> Three potato more. Okay. These, this one's you probably haven't thought to add to your list. Um, this type of a potato watches people. Well, potatoes have eyes. That, so That one's a spectator. Oh, brother. Okay. <laughs> this potato um, emulates others. Emulates others. He's a uh, copy... Catator. He's an imitator. Oh, how did you say imitates others? No, it emulates. Oh, emulates. Okay, uh, this one is kind of like holds back a bit. This kind of uh, this kind of potato holds back a, a bit because it's just kind of like a little like a little trepidatious little holds uh, back. Is it a hesitator? It's a hesitator. <laughs> it's, it's another type that. Okay, uh, this kind is just like a bit of an authoritarian, a little bit of a tyrant. A dictator. It's a dictator. Okay. Uh, this one likes to, uh, to tell people about uh, like sports games. A, a commentator. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See how many? And then this one just kind of like just stirs up crap. Uh, an instigator, instigator. Inst- I don't know. That one's an agitator. Oh, an agitator. <laughs> well, it's very good. That's like a, at least a dozen different types of taters, you know. Yeah, wasn't it? Was it last week or was it a few weeks ago where you, you were doing uh, the jokes with the what do you call someone with no arms, no legs? <laughs> oh, yeah. Like wh- what would you call a po- up yet. what would you call a potato that removes the arms and legs? Hmm. Oh, is that a decap potato? <laughs> oh no that that would be the head. Oh, I see. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, delimi- delimitator. Limitator. A, uh, a limitator. You know what? As I told the joke, <laughs> I forget the answer. Sounds good. A uh, Oh, an amputator. Oh, nice. I'm like, I've already forgotten what my joke an is going to be. amputator. 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 Oh, yeah. we missed every single one of those. Instigator. <laughs> Agitator. <laughs> so, yeah, these are, are different types of... Uh, that's great. Yeah, just a little something to try and try and out your vocab. So Couch around potato around these parts, <clears throat> mm-hmm. uh, potatoes are every, like an every meal situation here. My daughter, like every day, are you adding potatoes to that? No matter what I'm making, are we also having potatoes? And like with your French fries, <laughs> exactly. A side of mash. So fries, potatoes, baked. Pot- like she's a potato holic. She loves the carbs. She must because like. Every little starch. I can make the most amazing pasta dish. I need some potatoes with it. <laughs> Has she tried gnocchi? Potatoes? 
Has she what? Tried oh, gnocchi? Yeah, she has. Okay, because she'll ask for potatoes on the side. Because well, it is potatoes, so. But she'll still ask for more <laughs> potatoes. You know those little min- those bags, the little mini potatoes you can get. Usually, like two or three colored potatoes all in one bag. Those new potatoes. Nude. Yes, and new new potatoes. New potatoes. New potatoes. Like they're called new potatoes. New potatoes. Yeah, so they're like, uh, so because their skins are so thin and they haven't fully developed yet, they're new potatoes. So they're babies. Yeah, I guess that sounds like more like an infanticide, an infantator. Well, isn't that what you're saying? They're new potatoes. Yes, but that's what they call new potatoes. Well, we don't call them new people when we have children. We just call them babies. We just call them babies. So they're baby potatoes. Is <laughs> maybe? Well, I guess do we could call them, them new. Do you call them new carrots? New people. This is where new people go. Have you seen my new little person? I guess we do that a little sure. bit. Anyway, uh, uh, yeah, potatoes, big fan, big fan round here, round these parts. I, I think if there was a, a like a carb, a go-to carb, it would be rice. For yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In our families, it would just like throw on rice more so. Yeah. Potatoes take too long. Maybe it is just a rice. carb thing because she loves the rice. Well, potatoes, roasted potatoes, twenty minutes. Well, if you, if I guess depending on how thin you cut them, I guess they could go faster. But like well, they're a, new potatoes. Well. This goes without saying. We had, uh, we so we celebrated, um, oh, I was going to say it was a birthday, but it was actually Mother's Day mm-hmm. we were celebrating. And we did, uh, I went out and I, I bought way more than necessary baked uh, potatoes and baked them for the masses. Did and you bake them for 20 minutes? Not those ones. No, oh, that was really? an hour. really? Interesting. A whole potato an hour, was you say. an hour. Yeah. But we did like the, it was like a salad bar version of toppings. And Fantastic. it was just like, grab a potato, make Chili, it however cheese. you want. Chili, cheese, Sour bacon. cream. Uh, the whole bit, yeah. So, potatoes. And bacon? Yeah, definitely. Bacon's faster than mm-hmm. the potato. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, pota- it takes an hour unless you want like, did you want to rock? Yeah, no, we, we slice up the, or we we wedge up the new potatoes. Mm. Oil them up, salt them up, bake them up for 20 minutes. It's a go-to. Interesting. Yeah. But yeah, potatoes, like you can do a lot of stuff with potatoes if you think about it. It's a very versatile, uh, like root vegetable. You know, this, this, uh, it's a root vegetable. I don't think I have this here to actually look up, but I don't think I wrote it down, but I I did find out that you can actually survive on potatoes alone. There's enough nutrients in a potato. It, It did suggest adding some dairy. But other than that, you can survive on potatoes only. Wow. Yeah. So all the nutrients that are in there. And no matter what a potato or how solid it might feel, it is 80% water. That, uh, that 20% me. solid. Hmm. So. I, I find that shocking. It, it's uh, Well, that's shocking. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm put back by that. That reminded me of Buddy the Elf. That sets, we used to, that we used sets to fly. me on my heels. There's not as much uh, Christmas cheer anymore. Well, that's shocking. Well, that's shocking. <laughs> yeah, well, so 80% water and you can survive. That's all you need. Like, if you're ever planning for, like, end of days, just forget sack, all these. sack of potatoes. Just keep a sack of potatoes. You don't need to be a prepper. Just get a sack of potatoes. Yeah. You'll be fine. The only problem is their shelf life versus a can of anything. Canned potatoes? <laughs> canned potatoes. If you just put whole potatoes and can them up. Last longer than just regular potatoes. But however, if, but they you survive the, in the dirt. if you eat the stems and leaves of potato, that can actually uh, make you like hospitalized sick. What? Yeah. Poison. Potato poisoning. Uh, like vodka? I've heard of that. No, just the, the green stems and leaves. No. Look it up. Look it up. It's still part of the nightshade family, right? So a nightshade's filled with all like sorts of... Like a mandrake of- root? Is that a nightshade? I don't know. It just sounded very D and D. It's it, nightshade is. Uh, it sounds like a poison you're think, f- is preparing. It Peter Pan or something. That they, they poison him with. I can't remember. It sounds like a Hamlet kind of. Yeah, there's something with the nightshade. Of nightshade. Yeah, exactly. Mandrake root. So technically, the potato is a nightshade, but the potato is fine. It has all the nutrients in the world, but its stems and leaves. It's is that like kill, the? I don't know if it could kill you, but it can make you sick. It's like the defecation of the potato. Then it's like all the bad things. It's just pooping them out into leaves. Well, wouldn't which the won't, wouldn't the fruits of any plant be the uh, be the poop? <laughs> I wouldn't think of it that way. Hmm. Isn't that the? It's what well, the, I've heard the, the tree like, is pumping out apples. Well, it's, but like the seed of something, because like you have a cherry, but the cherry seed doesn't it have like arsenic or something crazy in it. Oh wow, really? I don't yeah, know. something crazy like that. Does a potato have a seed, or maybe it's in the leaves? Oh, well, it's not. It, no, I think it is the seed. 
Oh, the potato is the seed. I, I don't know. Basically, that's we're just why it grows this up. little legs when you wait too long to eat it. <laughs> it's trying to walk away. <laughs> it's got the little sprouts, right? Which you can eat. But they're, I thought you just said they kill you. No, not the sprouts of the potato. Well, that sounds like a dangerous lion. Are we eating like, like fubu? How? So the like, sprout's okay, but if it turns into a green stem, I don't know. This is not science. This I'm pretty is much internet sure science. half of this is made up right now. <laughs> no. But not like... I got my potato logic. <laughs> it's it's it does, it does sound a little wanting. Did you know that the first Mr. Potato Head was just the part, just the accessories? I did know this. And you had to get your own potato. Yes, but then uh, it came up when there was like some more family type times that they thought... It's a like disrespectful of food. Yeah, and now that's why we still get told don't play with your food. Don't play with your. Pot- but if you had a potato and you're like, hey, this can keep you entertained for hours, just don't eat the green stems. Did you ever make a potato cannon? Absolutely. Yeah. Then I tell you, I, I think I've told you the potato cannon story up at camp, when one of the guys made the potato cannon and shot the, shot it at the other kids, and we were it, it was like, please shoot it at the other kids, and everyone was waiting, because you're thinking, how fast can a potato cannon possibly shoot a potato? And you didn't try it first. The answer is very fast, like a bullet. (laughs) Anyways, uh, I believe it was like uh, David... um, Peters? David Peters and like uh, Dang, I think think it was Dang's uh, potato launcher, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think I've shared this story. Anyways, when uh, Dang and, and Vince shot this thing... It was like a seeking missile, and that it was like it, it, you couldn't get out of the way, and it was like a knuckleball, and it just and it shot Luke in the back. I believe is how the story goes. He so was what finally, was the David part of this, or just that he was well, there? that we were just all in the same. Oh, I see. We were all like inviting the shot, right? And right, then right. it was like see where it goes, and yeah, pretty sure it got Luke right in the back. So like, he just couldn't get away. Now, did you use pop cans or like soup cans? No, dang, made like. Like PVC tube. Oh, wow. So I've seen one made when I was a kid. My uncles made one out of pop cans, but I don't think they were this flimsy back then. Like back I, when pop cans were made with like, yeah, like there was a little steel. There was a little more, yeah, oomph to it. To yeah, it. that's they were more expensive back then because you could then use them to like plumb your home. They were so like steel pipey. <laughs> pop cans, <laughs> I don't know. soda cans. That last depending on where you're listening up. from. I'm not sure where I heard that last part. <laughs> <clears throat> little gorilla tape and okay. Diet Coke cans. I got a couple. I got a couple more. Little Mister Potato Head thoughts for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, launched in 1952, uh, the original was the first potato out of a cannon. The original kit sold for less than a dollar, ninety eight cents for the wow. Mister Potato. Head. How many pieces? I don't know. That's a good question. One eye. <laughs> they come with their own eyes. All right. Uh, okay. Um, Mister Potato Heads. Uh, when it went into plastic, it doubled in size during the 70s um, because there was some regulation and they wanted less oh, sharp swallowing sharp and, parts yeah. and all the rest of it. So they had, they increased its size. Um, yeah, now he's the size of a football. And then the one I didn't know, this is really recent. Uh, in 2021, Mr. Potato Head became gender neutral. So, oh, I did hear about so that. So it was like, now it's just Potato Head. Right. Yeah, it is, it, it's, it's androgynous. Which it kind of always was. Well, for sure. If you put lips on it, it now it was a Mrs. Yeah, like potato you could, head. They sold Mrs. and Mr., but you could put the parts on anybody. Well, I guess. So it always was. So it was always. They a, just removed the word Mr. Yeah, so now it's potato head. So right. now it's inclusive. It's a it's not a gendered based toy anymore. It's just a potato head. But what I'm arguing mm-hmm. is that it always was. Like that it's a male potato? It was born that way. Oh, I see. They didn't change it. Hmm. They just they just do you think well, have somebody we been, assigned have we been dead naming the Mr. Do you think someone assigned it at New Potato, a, a, a gender, and it became a Mr. Potato? And that's no, the problem, I, I is think, that the potato is just a construct. Right. Right. I, I, no, I follow what you're saying. You think, I think that Mr. Anything back in the day was just a cute way of going, go, go play with that. What? Play with Mr. Sticker. Hmm. Go ahead, kids. That's the toy you've got. Mr. Stick is <laughs> so fun. Play with Mr. Log. That was a Ren and Stimpy. The log. What rolls downstairs, a load <laughs> of repairs, <laughs> it hits your neighbor's dog. It's log. <laughs> it's large, it's big, it's heavy, it's wood. Log, log, log. I do remember that. Yeah. So stupid. The heyday of Ren and Stimpy. <clears throat> yeah, well, that's a uh, so, uh, long sorted history with the potato. It's a, it's a, it's a phenomenon. I think they're called new potatoes because tater tots was already taken. 
Well, that's what you would call a tyrannical, a tyrannical, yeah, a tyrannical. You can do it. You can do it. Like, do you smell burning? Am I having a stroke right now? <laughs> no. So I'm like, because we were talking about our previous list, and then I'm like, but then you could take any one of those things and make it a child, and then you get a whole new set of jokes. So it watches people. It watches people. Oh, it's just, a child that watches people. Oh, I see. I see. So it's a spectator taught. <laughs> spectator taught. Yeah, you just take whatever it was. Add the word taught on the end. Is had, that had a child? A child clue. <laughs> yeah. Makes things so it, it holds back. It, it's a child child root vegetable that holds back. Is that a, that's a, hesit- a hesitator tot? <laughs> that's a hesitator tot. That's funny. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, but the couch potato. I, I one last kind of thing on the list before we head into origins. Talking about actual um, couch potatoy stuff. Is there any shows that you've loved? Series that you've just that binged. have starred potatoes. No, that you've just binged out on. Yeah, of course. What are some of your favorites? Um, see, my binging. I haven't been a couch potato. I should I should preface my answer. I haven't been a couch potato for years and years and years because of my phone. So I'll binge something, but I take the TV with me, so to speak. Wow. You know what I mean? Oh, like, uh, like I've been with you and we we're watching shows as we're driving down the highway. Right. Yeah. That's me. So I will binge. I just don't sit on the couch. We're all watching it going to our death together. That was when, that was when actually I think what you're referring to. Do you remember to, when we went to Portland? But was it on a phone or was it, uh, did I have an actual portable DVD player up on the dashboard? I think you had a DVD dashboard? player mounted into your dashboard. Yeah. yeah I had a, <laughs> when portable DVD players were brand new. Had one on my dashboard of my car. I think we went to Portland like five hours of driving. Yeah, it took it yeah. a whole series. I remember going up to Whistler watching Red Dawn with, with you. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Anyway, so Wolverines. so what have I binged lately? Um, well, there's there's like nonsensical stuff like The Circle. Have you watched that Ga- sort of reality game show? Oh no, I can't. I can't do it. Um, I don't have it in me. If I, I had the ability to binge Survivor, I would. Mm-hmm. But there's no streaming survivor. It's still real TV, so you kind of got to wait. And that is, that's not true. That's I, incorrect. I, I, yeah, I can stream it. I can play catch up, but I don't yeah. have I don't have normal cable. Mm-hmm. Like I've got to go find the episodes. Um, I recently watched a show called The Politi- po- Politician or something. Okay, on Netflix. Binge through that. Uh, it was. Eh. I'm trying to think of like Gwyneth show. Paltrow. Okay, so. I did look up a couple of um, ones that were on people's uh, couch potato list, and whether you did it Breaking Bad. Uh, yep, I def- I've i seen it all. I don't know that I've binged through it. I think I had to wait for the last season or two. Um, I never, and Sopranos was on the list. I, I, I've never seen it. Me neither. I never, I, I didn't go down that road. Uh, the GOT. Never seen it. Friends. I've seen it, but that would have been, I was alive for the re- weekly release and I wasn't faithful to like. Yeah. Friends never co- got me. I think if I ever couch potatoed out, like just sat down on the couch and didn't move, it would have been back in the day when real TV, like, you know, whatever came on b- pr- prior to choosing your own television. When there was three channels. Yeah. Or if I've been on a road trip and have the ability to watch something like you were saying. I, and Seinfeld was the last one on there. Again, not binging but oh that's couch true. potato i rewatched it when it hit netflix like non-stop all seasons <laughs> well, that sounds but, like a binge yeah so that if was ever a there was a classic yeah. definition of yeah, it yeah i will add on a couple of sci-fi ones that i really enjoyed um that couch potatoed me uh one being altered carbon yeah that's ringing oh yeah yeah with the sleeve uh, sleeving of people yep um dark don't know that one okay a fantastic, like uh, parallel university. I don't want to get too much for those who haven't seen it, but dark. And then this was like, in my opinion, it could be number one on my list for amazing uh, couch potato TV was Battlestar Galactica. I, the new one you're talking about. Yes. I haven't seen any it. It was that. so I you amazing. And mutual friend being really into that. And I'm like, ah, I'm not. It wasn't as sci- So, it, of course, it's sci fi because they don't have these things in space right now. So of course it was science fiction. <laughs> <laughs> I have a great- but it was all it wasn't about sci-fi. It was like great people stories, 
fantastic ending, great like leadership things on taking people through tormenting times. It was great. So Battlestar Galactica. So, but it's not real. It's not real. Well, so there's no there's no battle in the stars. Yeah, in the in the galaxy. So like, well, uh, but it's not it's not real. Real is all I was saying. I see. I do remember the original Battlestar Galactica. So when I went to Universal Studios as a ten year old. There were Cylons walk, walking oh, around. Yes. Um, but I also remember that in the original. Oh, yes. Man, I wish I could think of his real name. Uh, Edward J. Almost. No. The, Dirk. The ridge, yes, Dirk Benedict. Mm-hmm. So he was in the original Battlestar Galactic. Starbuck. And then became Face Templeton Peck on the A-Team. Absolutely. And in the intro of the A-Team, there was a Cylon, Cylon walks beside him. That is he, funny. And he's just like gives a little look to the camera. Of course I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I didn't put that... I together. always thought that was just genius. That's a funny little nod. TV move back in the That's day. A funny little nod. Obviously, both Universal, I'm guessing, but uh, or some affiliate of Universal. Well, that's nonsense. That's nonsense, and that's all the time we. Wow. Here, okay. I said some words. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? No. Somebody complained that we play some of these songs and tracks too loud. So. It's okay, it's safe. Turn up your volume. <laughs> All right, well, this has been um, one of the more pleasurable researching well, do tell. weeks. Because um, unlike most etymologies to most idioms, this one... Shakespeare, the we, Bible. We know the exact date what? that the phrase in question was first written down. We know the exact date that it was spoken out loud, and we know the exact person what? that said it. This is like the most knowledgeable one we have. Yeah. So, 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 in regards to the first part, we know the exact date that it was first in print was in 1979, so it's not that old. Uh, in an LA Times article where it said, and the couch potatoes who will be lying on couches watching television as they are towed toward the parade route. So, whatever that was referencing exactly... Uh, that was the first time ever, without question, no arguing on the internet, that was the first time the use of couch potatoes in its idiomatic form was used. So, uh, as far as when it was ever first spoken and the man that created this phrase, uh, he uttered it during a phone call on July 15th, 1976. What? And so, to be really specific, the man who said this phrase, his name is Tom uh, Lachino. Okay. Or Lacino, maybe. Tom Lucino, he stated uh, that he coined the phrase during a phone call to a friend. The friend's girlfriend answered, and it was just an off-the-top, ridiculous thing that he said. He just said, hey, is the couch potato there? And she looked across the room, and there he was on the couch, and she just started laughing, and it stuck. So he was just referring to his friend. Could have pulled out any word, hmm. but chose potato. He knew his friend is like TV, avid TV watcher. He's like, That's hey, is one. the couch potato there? So that was the first time it was spoken. And although he claims there was no real thought behind the phrase, like it just mm-hmm. happened, uh, there's actually been a lot of linguists who argue that subconsciously there was a lot more meaning uh, behind him saying that. Because back in the day, even when I was a kid, I remember my dad using this phrase, calling the TV a boob tube. The boob tube. The and not like a, a breast Has boob. nothing to do with breasts. It's has like, an, you're an idiot. Yeah, you're an idiot. You're a just, it's, you're watching you're the boob. idiot box. Yeah. Um, the idiot box. <laughs> so, That's so funny. So it was, I haven't heard that in a long time. The TV was called a boob tube. The <laughs> the Latin or the um, the uh, edible part of a potato is called a, do you know? A tuber plant. I've heard this word. So we got boob tube and we've got tuber. So it's commonly believed wow. that the phrase couch potato was intended wow. as a clever combination of those two ideas. And so uh, the truth is, no matter what you think about that, he went. So went it's the in- idiot potato. <laughs> wow. The boob tuber. It's the. A tuber. It's the couch potato because it's a tuber. It, wow. It's a. And then now being taken over by. YouTube. By the. Yeah, the, the, the me potato. So YouTube <laughs> is clearly a play on boob tube because the word tube. As in cathode ray tube and a television. Also, go. It could either be couch potato tuber connection, or yeah, or the tube inside the back of a television. CRT. 
And so, yeah, so it's all kind of interwoven. But That's great. He says, like, he literally when asked, like, did you put that much thought into it? He shrugs and just goes, no, nah, I just... Okay, the legitimate children, you're going to sound infinitely smarter if you use that around the water cooler today. All of this? Oh, we're not done. There's more? Oh, yeah. Well, that's in and out of itself. So he might not have... So Tom boob- Lachino might not have been tuber. totally aware of the play on words and the subtleties behind everything he said, but his friend, his friend's name was Robert Armstrong. Uh, it, it stuck with him, and he loved it. Robert Armstrong happened to be a cartoonist. So why did one random phone call of a friend, why did it stick? How did it become internationally used well robert armstrong was a cartoon and he turned it into a cartoon called the couch potato and at the time um, not only that but at the time both lachino and armstrong were members of a group that referred to themselves as the boob tubers um so there was a movement against it was tongue-in-cheek but it was a movement that got a little acclaim uh, against physical activity and exercise so hard to call it a movement (laughs) Good point. So they called themselves the Boob Tubers, tubers and the boob they tubers. were organized in 73 and got this, like, obviously humorous response, uh, very much against the Californian health craze momentum, and were even in parades, like, it would be a float with no decor, just a couple of couches and working TVs would go down through the parade. Awesome. We are the Boob Tubers. So Armstrong, who was a cartoonist, uh Brought it into the sort of the mainstream of language uh, by his own cartoon called The Couch Potatoes. That's, this is awesome. And uh, yeah, like the rest is history. So after that came the LA Times article. Oh, this is this is also interesting. So Armstrong, inspired by the success, created a bunch of merchandise around The Couch Potato, even going as far as publishing a newspaper called The Tuber's Voice, The Couch Potatoes Newsletter. So kind of combining it all. And... Uh, so what got really interesting is after it got this much momentum, Tom Lachino, who was the first guy to say this, Robert Armstrong, who was the first guy to draw it, uh, to draw it uh, tried to sue the LA Times and other newspapers because they actually, previous to trying to sue, copy, got it copywritten oh, okay. because they're like, this is ours. A potato but, on a couch is ours. But it had gone so far mainstream that... Um, that there's it, no getting it back. There was no getting it back. You can't. It's too. It's too far. You can't sue on this one anymore. It's gone. You've lost it. Wow. So uh, there's a great quote here. This is a response from the L.A. Times when they were told to cease and desist. This is uh, this is the L.A. Times rebuttal or response. I'm afraid that your letter overlooks the fundamental distinction between statements of fact and statements of opinion. Mr. Sapphire's view concerning the wide acceptance of the term couch potato is clearly an expression of editorial opinion, and as the Supreme Court has instructed, there is no such thing as a false opinion. Although you may disagree with this opinion, there is simply no (laughs) basis for requesting a a, a correction. So neither the New York Times nor any other media outlets uh, budged at all as far as stopped using it. Oh, man. And uh, that's so a, Tom that's, Lugino, like if he's alive out there, shut that up. was you, man. That was you. That's a good one. That's a great backstory. Yeah. I like the whole tuber thing. Well, um, they haven't picked up on that. Like you potato, like they just haven't gone forward with the whole tuber, like YouTube. Yeah. The YouTuber. So I a guess, tuber, it, I guess you're potato. still a couch potato, even if you're watching YouTube. It, for sure. I, but they don't hassle. You don't hassle someone who's like works on a screen. You're like, hey, get off that idiot box. <laughs> it's like well, this is how I make my money. It's yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Times so. have changed. So yeah, uh, yeah. I was really pleased with this one because it's like, ah, that, oh, there's no good... guessing. That's why I couldn't really give you a game with this one either because it was kind of a lengthy description and uh, that's a great backstory. And it was, and it was like actually interesting. That's yeah. an interesting and so definitive water cooler. Uh, Piece of conversation for the illegitimate children out there. That's a good one. A it tuber. Was. A tuber. Well, time is tickety tick tocked. W- got away on us. Uh, fortunately, we spent the first 20 minutes talking about stupid things. Uh, well, it was at least uh, in the. Well, how do we know it was interesting? Uh, at least it was in the vein of potatoes this week. It did have something to do with potatoes. <laughs> I'll give it that. Potato cannons and, and potato jokes and riddles. Like it was. I. I I've, I'm happy with where this went. I, we might have wasted time, but sometimes we waste time that has nothing to do with the idiom. That's good. So, That's true. So high five on that. High five. Shabam. Shabam. Yeah, we could have uh, like done a whole thing on monkeypox or something. <laughs> 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 see, let's see where that goes. Yeah. Yeah. Monkey, monkey pox. 
Idiot box, monkey box. Oh, you should do like a wrap. <laughs> it, it's it's it prevents the vaccine that prevents smallpox prevents monkeypox, and so you are two pox secured. <laughs> Uh, well, Riddle League is a game we like to play. It takes a two-part trivia-based question, requires a two-part overlapping answer, overlapping by sound, syllable, word, or word. So, for example, if you remember, just last week we did uh, the idiom, uh, cost an arm and a leg. Do you remember that? And I left you with this one. The price is your limbs at this brisk, lively tempo in music. The price is your limbs at this brisk, lively tempo oh, in music. I want to say cost an arm and allegra. Close enough. Allegro. Allegro. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cost an arm and allegro. That's so a cost wow. an arm and a leg. A and double allegro. word. Allegro. Yeah, you'd use two words. Or, hey, oh, yeah, that's, that's true. That's pretty amazing, actually. Yeah, so that's how you play Riddling. So, well, I've got a couple prepared. I have zero prepared, but okay. we had a listener who asked in advance, what what idioms are you doing coming up? Can I send you some potential Riddlings? So oh. I have two. I just didn't write them. Oh, okay. I'm excited. So Beetlebat sent us in okay. two Riddles. Ah. Actually, he sent us in about 15 Riddles. Okay. So I chose two you're, of my You're going to use them? Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, 15 just for this. Just for this one. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, well, I'll get a couple going, and then uh, you get a couple going. I, and, and, but do you want to start with one? Because you got 15, or you just did you write oh, down two? I wrote down two, but okay. I, I could open up my phone, and I'd have a lot more. It's okay. We'll go through here. Okay. Uh, let me start off with this one. It sits lazily watching TV with a weaponized root vegetable. <laughs> weaponized root vegetable. Wow, it feels like... He sits lazily watching TV with a weaponized root vegetable. Like a couch potato cannon? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm the one that brought up potato cannon. <laughs> yeah, I Sneaky. Know. I didn't even need to segue in. Sneaky. Yeah, that's good. All right, all right, all right. Okay, let me give you one. Okay. Uh, courtesy of Beetlebat, we got uh, lounge on the sofa and watch this Arnold Schwarzenegger sci-fi classic. Oh, man. Okay. Lounge on the sofa and watch this Arnold Schwarzenegger sci-fi classic. Hmm. I I got couch potato 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 uh, potato running man uh, potato <laughs> kindergarten cop uh, potato wins potato. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to give you a clue potato that's still on top. Predator. You remember we we called the potato TV predator the boob tube. tube. Yeah. Well, in this potato. particular sci-fi, it would be three boob tube. Well, I know the movie. I know the scene. I can. <laughs> Of course you know. Of the course seed. you know the seed. The, uh, yeah, these are a few of my favorite things. <laughs> um, man, it's a oh potato total recall. There it is. I knew we'd get there. Oh, oh, that was a great movie. It was a good movie. Yeah, it was really fun. It was. I, I thought it was better than the redo with you Colin Farrell. I I don't know if I ever saw that. Mm, save yourself. Really? Yeah. This the original was better. Uh, the do you remember this is such a weird comment in memory? Do you remember when he's n- not himself and he's a, oh yeah an older woman and her face splits wide open? I don't until he be, exactly. like her face just separates. <clears throat> okay, and oh. reveals that it's him. Okay, or oh, however yeah. that yeah, works. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. he's just, in like a fat suit. Just yeah, just yeah. after I saw that movie, I saw that woman who's just a. Like that's her only part in the movie. I saw that woman on um, the grocery uh, store. Uh, no, like The Price is Right, and I'm like, that's just, that's, that's the same the, that's woman. The lady, her face just split open. That's the total recall. And she now she's just a contestant. And on the out price. comes Bob Barker. <laughs> she's on the show. It's like she's so good at this. <laughs> price is wrong. The Bob. Price is wrong, Bob. Okay, I got another one here. Okay. Kyrie Eleison band. Oh no. For a gendered replaceable. Oh, Replaceable part toy. All right, say it again. Carry a laser band. Carry a laser down the road. Carry a laser gun for a. That was for you. For a gendered uh, replaceable parts toy. That would be Mr. Mr. Potato. Mr. Mr. Potato. I wanted to add one more Mr., but that was wrong. Yes, it's Mr. Mr. Potato. It's a. I added. I added a head on the end. But you don't have to. Like, Mr. Oh, Mr. Mr. Potato Head. There you go. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. You, no, you're right. You got it. It's not Mr. Potato Head. No, I don't want to be petty. It's Mr. Potato Head. I don't want to be petty. No, you're right. 
<laughs> All right, you ready? <laughs> yes. Uh, the legitimate children, we would right. love to hear from you. Uh, Beetlebat, you can't answer on this one because you wrote it. But for anyone else, we would love to hear from you on Instagram at the dot village dot idiom or email us the village idiom podcast at gmail.com or whether it's the Facebooks, the YouTubes or the Twitters at three minutes gone. I left this one for our illegitimate children because it's my favorite one that he wrote. Oh, OK, OK. I like it. This crazy cannibalistic bovine disease sure is a lazy TV watcher. Oh, man, I got it. This that is crazy a good one. cannibalistic bovine disease sure is a lazy TV watcher. And that is three minutes gone. Ew. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, that one's... Uh, really appreciate the puzzles. <laughs> Those are great. I'll rattle some of them off air to you, see if you can get them. Sure. Well, we got to wrap this one up. Uh, we are beyond time. People are already jumping off their treadmill. They don't know what to do right now. <laughs> is that what's happening? Yeah, they're they're already at work, and they're like, I wanted to listen to the end, but it was so freakishly long. Good thing we talked about <laughs> potatoes for 20 minutes. Exactly. Well, anyways, I'm Skitty. I am Jurassic Tubermark. And these are the Village Idioms. <laughs> I'll take it. That's three minutes gone.